before sunrise on the first day of the week, in holy darkness, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Alone in this version from the Gospel of John. And we know what happens next. We just heard how she found the tomb empty, the stone rolled away, how she ran, ran to tell some others. They in turn went running too to confirm that Jesus' body was gone. Not understanding, they went home, leaving Mary alone, sobbing outside the tomb. Then there were a couple messengers from God, all of a sudden where the body had been. They asked her what she was doing, and strangely they provided no answer to her response. They have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. For some reason, she turns away from these strange figures at this point, clothed in white. I wonder why. Maybe she heard footsteps behind her, or the sound of someone clearing their throat as if to speak. In any case, Mary turned around and saw Jesus saw but did not recognize him. And it says that she supposed him to be the gardener. The gardener. I wonder why she didn't recognize her teacher and friend, the very one she was looking for. Last Easter, I heard Nadia Boltz Weber, an American Lutheran pastor, reflecting on the story, and her words have stuck with me for the past year. She wondered if the reason Mary thought that Jesus was the gardener was because he was dirty. She imagines in this moment that Jesus was not sparkling and put together like at the transfiguration or in a lot of our religious art of the resurrection, but rather in her words that he had the dirt from his own tomb under his fingernail. I like that. I think that is important. It is why the resurrection really matters to me, not as a disassociated spiritual experience or a warm feeling, but the messiness of matter, the cells, tissues, and organs of a body like mine covered in dirt. For me, this is in keeping with the earthy spirituality of the Christian faith in which bodies matter where our God put on flesh, chose the messiness of birth, putting an end to the false dichotomy between the spiritual and the physical. For me, it is in keeping with the one who told stories about seeds and soil, who shared meals with people, handing bread and wine to one another, who was not afraid to roll up his sleeves, get down on his knees and wash the feet, touch the sick, spit into the dirt and rub the mud onto a man's eyes. The resurrection is a revolution, a victory of life over death, but it is not a revolution of violence and domination. It is rather like a gardener who plants and grows and tends their garden. Maybe it is apt that Jesus was mistaken for a gardener. The instructions for this revolution are simple, as simple as planting seeds, simple, everyday, and ordinary. At its core, this revolution is eating. Eating and remembering all that God has done. The revolution is about telling stories. The revolution is caring for people who are not usually cared for. This is how it happens, how The garden that God has planted, the kingdom of heaven, grows and spreads organically. This is what Jesus showed us, what God did in planting God's own fleshy body in the earth like a seed that bears its fruit in dying. We are an Easter people. We share in the mystery of the resurrection, not a resurrection that removes us from the world 
but one that anchors us to it in a new way, that moves us in response to this gracious mystery to roll up our own sleeves, kneel down beside God in the garden, and get some dirt under our fingernails too. We are called to this miraculous, ordinary, earthy Easter project, this everyday resurrection work, comforting those who mourn, telling stories, sharing meals, loving God, and neighbor. It is, it is simple, but it is a revolution that will change the world. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.